Okay, so why do you need math? Uh, you need math for opportunity. If you plan to go to grad school now or sometime in the future, many graduate schools require the GRE, and interestingly, on their website, they actually now are doing a three-year test, um, pilot program, rather, of GREs from employers. So it's important that people are familiar with what's in the GRE. Um, this particular set of questions are quantitative reasoning. There's also verbal reasoning and two different essays. But for today, we're going to focus on this particular type of math problems, which are quantitative comparisons that used to be on the SAT. Uh, some of them, like this number one, are just uh, number theory, so prime numbers. Uh, number two is looking actually at something that's ambiguous. One of the answers here is the relationship cannot be determined. So this says that Lionel's younger than Maria, and which is larger, twice Lionel's age or Maria's age. The possible choices are A is greater, B is greater, they're equal, or can't be determined. This one is a, is a can't be determined. And if we look at number three, three is a percent question. If you know what half of 360 is, you don't even need to find out what 54% is, and you can do that comparison pretty easily. Uh, number four is a triangle geometry type question, and here they actually, um, it's not drawn to scale. They say PQ is equal to PR, so it's really supposed to look much more isosceles. And um, in this one, on the next page, they have actually the two different scenarios that it could be, and it turns also into another D. Uh, this next one is algebra, and it asks us which of these two is greater based on the algebra. And again, it, turn, it turns into a D. Uh, number six is very interesting because they actually do a lot of algebraic manipulation here. And when they look at the two different columns, they actually have it come down to um, one versus y. And since they say y is greater than four at the top, they can actually say that y has to be greater. So um, this is a very interesting one because this actually looks like lots of algebra. Number seven is looking at exponents, and this is actually also really interesting because if you divide both of these by two, this says two to the 30th minus two to the 29th, that would be two to the 29th minus two to the 28th. Well, it turns out that two to the 28th is half of two to the 29th, and it doesn't look like it should work that way, but it does. So this one actually comes out to, the two are equal, choice C. Uh, this one is another algebra one, this one actually turns into something really interesting when you do the algebra. It comes out to, on one side, a perfect square. On the other side, it has a negative number. Well, a perfect square can only be zero or positive. So that one comes out to an actual answer instead of C or D. It comes out to A, where A is greater. And the last one is another algebra problem, which, similar to something in the other ones, goes through a whole bunch of steps. And in this case, we're actually comparing the value of W with, um, with do and assuming W is greater than 1. When we actually solve for W, we find that we have to compare it to 9 fifths. And so 9 fifths doesn't give us any clear sense if it's greater than 1, less than 1, because it could be something in between. So this one is, cannot be determined. So the strategy, of, as what they say here, is the strategy of simplifying the comparison works most efficiently. We do the same thing to both sides. But really what these questions are designed to do is to help people think kind of outside the box and are very different than looking at multiple choice questions and are actually a great tool for learning and teaching. Thank you very much.